Hopefully somebody wrote it down, you can copy it. So let's talk about vertical. All right, so we're talking about our, our horizontal asymptote was our horizontal line, right, that our graph approached. Our vertical asymptote is going to be now the vertical line that our graph is going to approach. And remember, when we talked about vertical asymptotes, or on our notes, we talked about our domain. And the domain, remember, is the set of all x values that make up your function. When dealing with rational function, your domain is going to be all real numbers. All real numbers for your domain. All right, For the functions we're going to be dealing with, it's always going to be all real numbers. Um, the next thing to notice, though, please, it's going to be all real numbers except when your denominator, or for, I'm sorry, it's going to be except for the values of x that are going to make your denominator equal to 0. OK? It's going to be, um, it's going to be all the values that are going to make your denominator equal to 0. So to find the vertical asymptote, so horizontal, well, we had to do the test, right? We had to compare the degrees. It's either greater than, less than, or equal to, right? For vertical, all we do is we take our denominator and we set it equal to 0. All right? So you set it equal to 0 and solve, and that's it. So to find the vertical asymptote, you just take what's on the bottom and solve. So let's get to the first one. The first one, you could multiply that out, but you guys notice this is actually what we can use the square root property. Just take the square root of both sides. So you have x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals negative 1. Undid the square root on both sides. So I could say my vertical asymptote is when x equals negative 1, right? Because x equals negative 1 is a vertical line. If you graph that, x equals negative 1, that's a vertical line. Yes, yes, yes. Yes? Why is it changed to a positive? I don't know. What are you talking about? I didn't change it to a positive. Sorry, I, I'm maybe losing it. Um, but does that make sense what I did? OK? Mm -hmm. So I square root of both sides, get rid of the square. Now for this one, I have a trinomial. So what, what technique do we use when we have this quadratic? Rhymes with tactorine. Factoring, right? Oh my god, we passed out the test and you would be, wouldn't believe how many students forgot how to factor. So can we factor this? Yes, we can. Um, x plus 3 times x minus 2. Now, why do we factor? The only reason why we factor is when factoring, we get rid of our x squared, but then we can now use the zero product property. So you can say x plus 3 equals 0 x minus 2 equals 0. x equals negative 3, x equals 2. So now your vertical asymptotes are when x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Does that make sense? So now you, this graph is actually going to have two vertical asymptotes. So your graph is going to approach both of those lines as it goes to infinity and negative infinity. What does it look like? We're going to talk. We're gonna talk we're, we'll look at them later in class today. And the last one is this one. So now we say, all right, we've got to do this by what? Factoring, right? Is this factorable? No. no, right? So since it's not factorable, well, how else can we find x? Well, it is set it to 0. So what, what techniques else can we use? If it's not factorable, then we can use the quadratic formula or complete the square, um, either one. Since I have a positive 1, I know I'm going to have to divide by 2 and square it. I'm probably not going to want to complete the square just because I don't want to deal with fractions. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll use the quadratic formula. So it's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times 1. Okay. So when we look at this, we have negative 4 times negative 1, which is going to be 5. So we have x equals. So negative 1, let's see, that's going to be negative 1, so plus 1, so it's going to be square root of 5 over 2. All right? Uh, that's plus or minus. OK, I can't reduce that any more than the square root of 5. So I'm going to actually have two y-intercepts, or two x, x two vertical asymptotes. 
at negative 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 and uh, negative 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. All right. So now we just don't have real numbers. They're going to be imaginary numbers. If you guys want to plug them in, you'll get a decimal right, for your value, um, an irrational decimal. But um, those are going to be your vertical asymptotes. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk a little bit about domain then. Just real quick. Remember, I talked about domain is going to be all real numbers except when our x is or when our denominator is 0. So when is our denominator equal to 0 for the first one? When x equals 1. So you can say your domain, you don't have to do this, but it's important for you guys to know your domain is from negative infinity to 1, union 1 to infinity. You could say all real numbers where x does not equal 1, right? You could say from negative infinity to infinity where x does not equal 1. You could say all real numbers except x cannot equal 1. You can, you know, just different values. Here, you're actually going to have two of them, right? You'd have to do it twice. You say from negative infinity and then does not equal negative 3 and cannot equal 2. And from here, it's negative infinity to infinity, but x cannot equal negative 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 and negative 1 minus square root of 5 divided by 2. All right, we understand at least the one with the domain and vertical asymptotes? Kind of? Okay.